no. It is 7.33 p.m. on Tuesday, February 27th, 2024. Good evening. Um, my name is Christian Klein. I am the chair of the Arlington Zoning Board of Appeals, and I'm calling this meeting of the board to order. I would like to first confirm that all members and entities from the Zoning Board of Appeals. Do we, uh, Roger DuPont? Here. Uh, Patrick Hanlon? Here. Uh, Venkat Holly. Here. Uh, Dan Riccadelli. Here. Elaine Hoffman. Here. And Adam LeBlanc. Here. Great. And uh, from the town, we have Colleen Ralston, our zoning assistant. And I don't see anyone else from the town with us. Um, and then appearing for docket 3784, which is 71 Edgerton Road, uh, Jeremy Gavin. Yes, I'm here. Perfect. Thank you. Uh, appearing for docket 3785, 51 Birch Street, uh, James Ritzling. Or someone else on behalf of uh, Birch Street? Christian? James, yes. is James is coming in right now. Oh, perfect. Okay. Um, and then for docket 3786, 19 Chatham Road, uh, Michael and Molly Hargrove. Yep, we're here. It's Chatham Street. Wonderful. Great. Thank you all. So this open meeting of the Arlington Zoning Board of Appeals is being conducted remotely, consistent with an act making appropriations for the fiscal year 2023 to provide supplementing certain existing applications appropriations and for certain other activities and projects signed into the law on March 29th, 2023. This act includes an extension until March 31st, 2025 of the remote meeting provisions of Governor Baker's March 12, 2020 executive order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, which suspended the requirement to hold all meetings in a publicly accessible physical location. Public bodies may continue holding meetings remotely without a quorum of the public body physically present at a meeting location so long as they provide adequate alternative access to, to remote meetings. Public bodies may meet remotely so long as reasonable public access is afforded so the public can follow along with the deliberations of the meeting. An opportunity for public participation will be provided during the public comment period during each public hearing. For this meeting, the Arlington Zoning Board of Appeals has convened a video conference via the Zoom application with online and telephone access as listed on the agenda posted to the town's website identifying how the public may join. This meeting is being recorded and it will be broadcast by ACMI. Please be aware that attendees are participating by a variety of means. Some attendees are participating by video conference, others are participating by computer audio or by telephone. Accordingly, please be aware that other folks may be able to see you, your screen name, or another identifier. Please take care to not share personal information. Anything you broadcast may be captured by the recording. We ask you to please maintain decorum during the meeting, including displaying an appropriate background. All supporting materials that have been provided members of this body are available on the town's website unless otherwise noted. The public is encouraged to follow along using the posted agenda. As chair, I reserve the right to take items out of order in the interest of promoting an orderly meeting. As the board will be taking up new business at this meeting, as chair, I make the following land acknowledgement. Whereas the Zoning Board of Appeals of the Town of Arlington, Massachusetts, discusses and arbitrates the use of land in Arlington, formerly known as Monotomy, an Algonquin word meaning swift waters, the board hereby acknowledges that the Town of Arlington is located on the ancestral lands of the Massachusetts tribe, the tribe of indigenous peoples from whom the colony, province, and commonwealth have taken their names. We pay our respects to the ancestral bloodline of the Massachusetts tribe and their descendants who still inhabit historic Massachusetts territories today. So moving to our agenda, um, first <clears throat> up as just an administrative item, um, as these items relate to the operation of board and as such will generally be conducted without input from the general public. Board will not take up any new business on prior hearings, nor will there be the introduction of any new information on matters previously brought before the board. Uh, so what's before us is the written decision on docket uh, 378253 Lansdowne Road. So this was a case that was heard in two subsequent meetings uh, voted on preliminarily at the last meeting, and uh, the final written decision was uh, written by um, Mr. Hanlon and myself and distributed to the board for uh, comments, and a final version was issued this afternoon. Are there any additional comments for the written decision for 53 Lansdowne Road? Seeing none, I will... Uh, accept a motion to approve the written decision for 53 Lansdowne Road. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Hanlon. 
Thank second. you. A second. Second. Thank you, Mr. DuPont. So vote of those who were present at the hearing. Um, um, Mr. Hanlon? Aye. Mr. Holly? Aye. Ms. Hoffman? Aye. Mr. LeBlanc? Aye. And the chair votes aye. That is approved. That is brings us to the end of our administrative items. <clears throat> Before opening the public hearings, here's some ground rules for effective and clear conduct of tonight's business. After I announce each agenda item, I will ask the applicant to introduce themselves for themselves and make their presentation to the board. I'll then request that the members of the board ask what questions they have on the proposal. After the board's questions have been answered, I will open the meeting for public comment. At the conclusion of public comment, the board will deliberate and vote on the matter. Any vote taken at this hearing will be preliminary until the written decision is approved by the board at a subsequent meeting. All votes will be conducted by roll call vote. Under state law, no decision granted by this board shall take effect until a certified copy of the final decision has been filed with and recorded at the Middlesex South Registry of Deeds in Cambridge by the applicant. So with that, I will move on to item number two on our agenda, which is uh, docket number 3784, 71 Edgerton Road. So if I could ask the applicant to introduce themselves and uh, tell us what they're seeking to do. Yes, uh, I'm Jeremy Gavin. Um, my company is Winwood Properties. Uh, we own the property. And we are looking to, um, right now it's a, currently a two family with living space on the first floor is one unit and the second floor is another. We're looking to add living space into the basement for the first unit to make two floors of living and then uh, living space on the attic that have two floors of living space for the other unit. Um, in doing so, we're short on open space. Um, so we are looking to uh, get a uh, variance on the open space. Okay, I will go ahead and bring up the drawings. Uh, so this is the uh, site plan that was initially provided. Um, And so my understanding is that uh, the additions to the basement level and the attic floor are all within the footprint of the existing building. That's correct. Um, yeah. The on the first floor, the only change is the is you're enclosing the rear porch. Correct. Correct. Yep. And then on the upper floor, um, this is already. In, enclosed and so you're just staying within the existing on the second floor exactly yep okay um and then also i believe the plan um the existing uh egress stair <clears throat> is going to be um removed and a, a new exterior egress stair is going to be added. Is that correct? Yeah, for this, you meaning this for the second floor unit? Um, yeah, currently, yeah. It, it's got a back stairway going out of the house, uh, two back doors on the first uh, open porch. Um, we're mm -hmm. going to have the egress off that back porch, and then there'll be a, a set of, you know, like a landing off the porch, and then a set of stairs. Okay. All right. Um, and I, I know you had exchanged some emails, um, with Colleen Ralston this afternoon. There were some questions about the gross square footage, um, yeah. of the property, uh, cause there was a couple, there were just some discrepancies in what was in the, the record that was submitted. So I just wanted to confirm with you, um, so you're saying that the existing gross floor area, um, Inclu including the attic and the basement is 4,514 square feet. That sounds right. Yes. Sorry, I don't have it right in front of me, but yes, that mm -hmm. sounds right. Yep. And the proposed gross floor area will be 4,808. Correct. Yep. Okay. Um, and so this was brought to, the, brought to us as a, a special permit under 542. Um, but the, so the 
we'll have to sort of think about this one a little bit. Um, in the zoning bylaw, any uh, a change in gross floor area that occurs within the footprint of the existing foundation wall is, is um, not considered um, substantially more detrimental and so can be allowed by right. Um, but there's the question about whether the gross floor, what the existing usable open spaces in the backyard and whether the property is compliant at this time and whether it's being made and non-compliant. Um, and then the other that came up when I was reviewing this with the um, with the zoning official was that uh, the enclosure of the porch on the first floor um, actually requires a special, a specific special permit from the board um, okay. under section 539D. Um, so we can look at that as well. Okay. Um, so with that, I am going to stop the share. Um, and turn to the board and ask if there are any questions of the applicant. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Hanlon. Um, so what is the current, um, I, I guess I'd like to have a little bit more explanation of what the current status is with respect to the amount of usable open space, if any, uh, that that currently exists. I'm, I'm my interest here is in making sure I understand whether or not mm -hmm. we're dealing with a situation where it's already not compliant so that we're talking about the expansion of an existing nonconformity or whether uh, we're talking about the possibility of a new nonconformity. Sure. So um, uh, as the applicant to correct me if I'm wrong here, uh, this is my understanding. This is the existing condition and the Correct, rear yes. yard. The rear yard is 30 by 28, which comes out to 840 square feet that would count towards usable open space. Correct. So if the existing, Mr. Chairman, if I may, yeah. it, 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 you need to have 30% of the gross floor area as usable open space? Yes. So 30%, I mean, just take roughly a third of that would be around 1,500 square feet. And that's would suggest that that the amount that they currently have is already non-compliant. It's not zero, but it's non-compliant. Is that correct? correct? Yeah. So 840, I believe, is 30% of, uh, yeah, this round is, uh, I think it's, it might be more than that, but it's certainly nowhere near the 4,500 gross square feet that the property already has. So Mr. Chairman, if I can continue there on that line of thinking, either this is not a significant extension because you're it, you're not going to a zero to a greater degree of zero, but you're going to some non-compliant percent to a greater degree of that percent. <laughs> um, uh, or alternatively, you're dealing with something that we could grant a special permit for uh, through a finding there's no substantial adverse impact beyond what's already there. Uh, and that, I guess, since since the applicant is already there, presumably it would be more efficient just to, to undertake to give him the permit if he otherwise qualifies for it. Mm -hmm. And so again, this is the floor, the plan set of the building. Um, I just wanted to go back. So this is the porch on the first floor. This is an open porch today. This will be enclosed, so this will the board needs to make a finding in regards to the enclosure of this porch. Um, the other question I would have for the board, so the this stairwell as it comes down, um, extends into the rear, what is currently the rear yard. Um, so it would reduce the 30 foot dimension to about 27 feet. Uh, so it would still count as usable open space, but it would be less than there is. 
Um, but as we've said, we already are under what we believe the proper value to be. Um, I just sort of ask as a, an open question for the board as to whether they feel that those that egress stair should be included in the calculation for usable open space or whether it should be excluded from usable open space. Um, this is sort of a, a situation we haven't really encountered before. Um, usable open space is intended to be for the recreation of the of the occupants by the definition in the bylaws. And in this case, it really wouldn't be for the recreation. It would be um, as a, as a uh, you know as an egress path. And so I was just curious if the board saw any issue with that and whether we should be including it in usable open space or not. Mr. Chairman? Yes, Mr. Hanlon. I, I may be a bit too simplistic about this, but I don't think it really makes a difference. Okay. Uh, because if there's less, suppose it turns out that we have to subtract that from current usable open space. If they're non-compliant now, they'll be a little bit more non-compliant, uh, you know, later. It, but you're still talking about whether or not the, there's a substantial adverse impact by the extension of the nonconformity. And it doesn't seem to me that, that this amount is likely to be material in, the, in, in that consideration. Okay. I'm not wrong about that, but it, it just seems that it's a fairly minor thing compared to uh, in the context of the entire, uh, in the context of the entire proposal. Okay. Mr. Chair. Mr. LeBlanc. Um, I agree with Mr. Hanlon on his um, interpretation of, of the egress stair and it, it uh, encroaching into the, the uh, open space in the rear yard there. Um, I do have one question that, that I just was thinking of. Um, does the applicant have any intention of subdividing the yard in any way? Since I'm assuming now this would be, you know, a two unit condo. So I know sometimes um, there's a desire to subdivide the um, the rear yard with a fence or other type of um, screenings or anything like that. Mr. Gavin, we weren't. Oh, sorry, uh, we weren't planning on dividing it with a fence or anything. We we've done this in the past, and we would just we usually just square off in the condo docks, you know, or the you know saying that this is this half and this is that, but not with a fence or anything. Just keep it one big open space. Okay. Yeah, I was just kind of asking. Yeah, just like a uh, you know a fence would kind of make it even smaller. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Even though it's the same size, it just right. makes it feel smaller. So yeah, yeah. No, I, I like that plan better. It's kind of how I have as well, and it works great. So yeah. Mr. Chairman, Mr. Dupont. So I just wanted to make sure I understood. So the attic that is going to be developed into uh, space, living space. Um, I wasn't sure that I understood the numbers correctly in terms of the percentage of of that area that was going to be seven feet or above. And I just wanted to make sure that the math made sense in terms of the restrictions for the half story. Mm -hmm. And so, it, sort of a corollary uh, to that was, I also was wondering, because I know that it said that there's going to be a dormer above the stair to give it more headroom. Is that correct? Yes, I believe. Yeah. yeah, and so would that be counted in the um, in the seven feet or above area? Because it sounds like it's coming up the stairs, but it's I didn't know it's not actually floor necessarily, right? So, so according to their documentation, um, the existing attic floor is seven hundred. Uh, excuse me, six hundred and fifteen square feet. And that will be increased up to 762 square feet, which is like, yeah. about 48%. Oh, 48% of the floor below? Yeah. Okay. I just wanted to make sure I understood the numbers. Thanks. Mr. Chair. Yes, Mr. Riccadelli. I, I just wanted to ask the applicant if there are any changes planned for the garage? No, we were hoping to keep that. That was one option when I was talking with the building inspector was to remove the garage to create more open space. But, you know, I, I hate 
need to lose a garage it's existing it's there so there is no plan to change it or anything because if we had to if we had to add the open space there we couldn't even have parking there so we would lose two parking spots even mm -hmm. in the driveway there's enough room right now in front of the garage to have two spots so right now we kind of really have four parking spots but if we lost the garage we really only have two parking spots because you need the other the rest of the driveway to get in and out of the parking spots. So we were hoping to keep it so we can keep four parking spots off street. Okay, understood. And if I may, Mr. Chair, um, please. The the added stairway that uh, is coming at four feet off the back of that new enclosed porch that um, doesn't impede the operation of the garage as as you have it. It looks like they're pretty close together. So just wanted to ask. No, there should be plenty of room to get, you know, you'd still have enough room to get up. The stairs are going to come almost to, to the footing of the um, driveway mm -hmm. uh, in front of the garage, and there'll still be plenty of space to get between to get into the backyard okay. and, and to get to the other the other unit. You'd have to go around the, the uh, porch to get into the back of that unit. So there should be plenty of room there. Okay, thank you. Yep. Thank you. Any other questions from the board? Only other question I had, I know in the basement, you're planning on installing two egress windows on the driveway side. Yep. Um, I would just encourage you to uh, provide some kind of a an easily detectable edge or bollards or something to make sure that cars don't accidentally drop a wheel into the well. Yeah, that was the plan. We were going to, uh, I've used them before in the past. There's a pre-made basin or whatever you want to call it, but then we were going to put a couple of posts like, you know, bollards there for the same Perfect. reason, same concern, okay. same people falling in as well, so. Right. Yeah. Yeah, and that's one reason why we moved the the, the basement, the layout's a little bit funky because we we could, we were originally intending to use the first window well nearest to the garage, but we realized if we did that, we would lose, you couldn't get in and out of those parking spots because mm. it would be impeding in the, drive, in the driveway more. So we kind of moved everything back to make that work. Understood. Thank you. Any other questions from the board? Seeing none, I will open the meeting for public comment. Uh, so just as a reminder, public questions and comments will be taken as they relate to the matter at hand and should be directed to the board for the purpose of informing its decision. Members of the public will be granted time to ask questions and make comments. Members of the public who wish to speak should digitally raise their hand using the button on the Reactions tab in the Zoom application. Those calling in by phone, please dial star nine to indicate you would like to speak. You'll be called upon by the chair. You'll be asked to give your name and address for the record, and you'll be given time for your questions and comments. All questions are to be addressed through the chair. Please remember to speak clearly. For anyone wishing to address the board a second time during any particular hearing, the chair will allow those wish to speak for the first time to be called upon first. Once all public, uh, public questions and comments have been addressed, the public comment period will be closed and the board and staff will do our best to show documents being discussed. So with that, I will ask if there are any members of the public who wish to address the board in regards to uh, this application. Um, I see a hand raised, um, Sabrina Egan. John Aprizizi, go ahead. Hello, uh, my name is John Aprizizi. We uh, live at 66 Chandler Street, which is right behind 71 Edgerton. Um, we looked at the plans. I just wanted to triple check. My understanding is there's just going to be a dormer on the second floor to add a little space. You're not going up an extra floor. It's just you're putting a dormer on the second floor. Is that correct? Yes, correct. On the uh, right-hand side, looking at from looking from 71. Okay. I'm looking from our street, it's on the right hand side. Okay, so you're not adding any floors, you're just putting a dormer on the existing second floor to, to sort of square it off. Yeah, correct. Thank you so much. That was all I had. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Um, just gonna quickly show. So this is the the elevation of that right hand side, um, which is the side opposite the driveway. So there's a small uh dormer above the stair to provide head height at the stair, and then a second small dormer over um uh what I believe is a bedroom area, a proposed bedroom area on the on that upper floor. Um and then on the side that faces the driveway, there's there are no dormers proposed for that side. Uh, 
Are there any other members of the public who wish to address the board? Seeing none, I will go ahead and close public comment for this hearing. So what the board has before it, this is an application for a special permit, uh, 71 Edgerton Road. Um, the applicant is proposing to do a build out in the uh, basement floor and a build out in the attic floor. The build out in the attic floor will require the addition of two small dormers on the right hand side. Um, with the addition of those two dormers, the floor area of the attic remains under 50%. So the house still fully qualifies as a two and a half story house. Um, the applicant is constructing two small egress windows on the driveway side of the building, um, which are allowed under the zoning bylaw. In addition, they are uh, they have an existing front porch with which is built out above that will remain as is. There is also an existing open porch on the first floor at the rear of the building with which is built out above. The plan is to enclose that lower porch that requires a special permit uh, from the board under section 539D. Um, and, the, and the applicant is also providing uh, an exterior stair uh, from the second floor level down to grade at the rear uh, that will wrap around that existing uh, porch structure at the back. Um, as we had discussed at the at the start, the um, there are a few existing non-conformities um, with regards to this property. Um, so the <clears throat> excuse me. Um, so the lot is uh, the lot is undersized um, at five thousand one hundred sixty feet. The minimum for the two-family district is six thousand. Uh, the existing frontage is 50 feet, where the minimum is 60. So those are both pre-existing conditions. Um, the existing front yard um, is 10.25, and there will be no change in that. That is a nonconformity. Um, the existing right side is 5.67 feet, where the minimum is 10. That's an existing nonconformity. Um, the existing uh, usable open space at the rear of the property is 840 square feet. Um, 840 square feet is not um, sufficient for the amount of uh, gross floor area existing in the house, so that it is non-conforming with regards to usable open space. Um, And those are so those are the existing nonconformities. Uh, the intent is not to create any new nonconformities, but there will be a change in the um, in the degree of nonconformity with regards to um, the size of the property, the size of the house in regards to the usable open space that's existing at the rear of the property. Um, in support of those. Um, So there's no real, there's not much of a change in the appearance of the house. So I'm not going to go through the, uh, the residential design guidelines. Um, but in reviewing the review criteria, um, so the board would need to make the standard findings for a special permit. Um, and in addition, um, the board would need to make a finding uh, in regards to the increase in the non-conforming nature of the structure uh, that is in regards to the usable open space. Um, often we won't make that if it's entirely within the footprint of the building, but where we are enclosing the, the rear porch, I think it's appropriate for the board to make that consideration as well. So are there any further questions from the board about the application? none um or we'll review the findings the required findings uh so the first is that the adverse effects of the proposed use will not outweigh its beneficial impacts um this is an existing two-family home in a residential district it will continue serving as a two-family home in the same residential district um there will be a modest increase in size from uh, 4,514 square feet to 4,808 square feet. 
Uh, most of that will be restrained to within the foundation wall of the basement, uh, which by the zoning bylaw is not considered um, a, a detrimental um, to the neighborhood. Uh, second, that the requested use is allowed or allowed by special permit in the district. Uh, so the two family use is an allowed use and it's an existing use. Uh, the requested use is essential or desirable to public convenience or welfare. So the, uh, the residential, um, residential accommodation in Arlington is an important, uh, part of our, our town and increasing the, the value of that stock and increasing the, um, uh, modernization of that stock is a, is good for, uh, the overall health of the town. Um, the requested use will not create undue traffic congestion or impair pedestrian safety. There are no um, improvements to the front of the property that would impede the view and uh, will not be a change in the number of users of the property um, anticipated. And so there should not be an increase in traffic. Uh, requested use will not overload any public systems. Uh, this is a two-family house remaining as a two-family house. They, the needs for the utilities uh, should not increase significantly. Um, the special regulations for the requested use are fulfilled. So the special uh, is section 539D, uh, which requires a finding by the board that enclosed in the porch is not, um, can be allowed. Uh, so that is a finding the board will need to make. Um, and there are no other, uh, and the other thing they're finding is just that in general, it's not detrimental to the to the neighborhood. Um, next is uh, requested use will not impair the character or integrity of the district. So this is this house is not changing substantially in terms of size or form. There will be two small dormers added uh, to the top and that will be visible from the street. The enclosure of the porch at the rear um, is not something that will be noticeable from the public and will uh, be a minor change to the property. Um, and neither of those should impair the, the character or integrity. Uh, the requested use will not be detrimental to public health or welfare. Um, the existing the existing use and the existing structure are existing in the neighborhood and the changes to them are of a, a minimal nature that should not be detrimental. And requested use will not cause an excess of use detrimental to the neighborhood. Um, again, this is a two family in a two family district uh, is the intended use and will not cause an excess. And then um, under section 813B, uh, non-conforming single family or two family dwellings. Um, an increase in the non-conforming nature of the structure will not be substantially more detrimental to the neighborhood than the existing condition. Um, but as we said before, these changes that are being proposed are fairly de minimis and um, should not cause any kind of substantial uh, change to the neighborhood and certainly nothing that would be um, considered more detrimental than the existing current house that is on the site today. Um, are there any questions or um, any opinions in regards to those findings? Uh, Mr. Hanlon, if you're speaking, you're muted. Sorry about that, Mr. Chairman. Please. The, uh, um, I just did some quick arithmetic. If you take the increase in gross floor area from about 4,500 square feet to about 4,800 square feet, um, that is an increase in the if you and then you you basically make the fraction of 840 square feet divided by those two numbers you go from 17 to 19 percent of the gross floor area for usable open space uh it's a measure of how de minimis it actually is uh and if the standard i mean I, it seems to me that the cleanest way for us to do this is to assume that what you have is um a substantial increase in the in the non-conformity because as long as we've had a hearing on it, we might as well proceed on that basis rather than do something that uh, that the uh, building inspector might disagree with us later on. Um, but if that's true, it's hard to imagine that can possibly be a, uh, uh, substantially more detrimental than the current condition. Thank you, Mr. Hanlon. 
So should the board choose to move to vote in favor of this application, um, there are three standard conditions that would apply. Uh, the first is that the plans and specifications approved by the board for the special permit shall be the final plans and specifications submitted to the building inspector of the town of Arlington in connection with this application for zoning relief. There shall be no deviation during construction from approved plans and specifications without the express written approval of the Arlington Zoning Board of Appeals. Number two would be the building inspectors hereby notified they are to monitor the site and should proceed with appropriate enforcement procedures at any time they determine that violations are present. The building inspector shall proceed under section 3.1 of the zoning bylaw and under the provisions of chapter 40, section 21D of the Massachusetts general laws and institute non-criminal complaints. If necessary, the building inspector may also approve and institute appropriate criminal action also in accordance with section 3.1. And number three, the board shall maintain continuing jurisdiction with respect to the special permit grant. Are there any additional conditions which the board feels would be appropriate to recommend for this application? Seeing none, the chair will accept a motion. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Hanlon. Um, I move that the board approve the application subject to the three standard conditions. Thank you, Mr. Hanlon. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you, Mr. DuPont. So this is a vote of the board uh, in, to approve the special permit for 71 Edgerton Road with the three standard conditions. Uh, so roll call vote. Uh, Mr. DuPont. Aye. Mr. Hanlon. Aye. Mr. Holly. Aye. Mr. Riccadelli. Aye. And the chair votes aye. The special permit for 71 Edgerton Road is approved. Thank you very um, much. For sure. You're very welcome. So we will prepare a final draft uh, and we'll hopefully vote at that at our first meeting in March. Okay. I appreciate your time. Thank you very much. Thank you. Have a good evening. Okay, returning to our agenda. Next item is docket 3785, 51 Birch Street. Um, I could ask the applicant to introduce himself and tell us what they are proposing. Hi, um, good evening. My name is James Rissling of LR Designs Incorporated in Cambridge, Massachusetts. Um, we are seeking approval for two curb cuts at 51 Birch Street to uh, provide two 10 foot wide driveways at each side of the site. Um, this will allow us to develop two equal duplex units um, at the center of the lot. Um, the other benefit is the two drives, um, which would be equivalent to a single double drive of 20 feet wide, um, will help preserve an existing um, 30 inch um, diameter um, ash tree that's um, basically in the center of the greenway in front of this house. Um, and that's, um, we think that's a, a good benefit. Um, the uh, abutting neighbor to the right, um, their driveway is on the opposite side of the site of their site. So there'll be quite a distance between the drives and then the abutter to the rear and to the left is undeveloped land in a floodplain. Um, so again, we're seeking approval for two uh, 10 foot wide drives uh, in the curb cuts, along with the materiality that we, we propose. Um, I think maybe the best way to look at this is in the um, landscape plans. Um, if you don't mind, um, pages two and three. I had to pull those up one second. Thank you. So page two shows the existing condition with an overlay of uh, proposed building footprint. And then um, to the center of the bottom of the page is the ash tree that I mentioned. Um, there's supporting photos on the um, right-hand side that show the existing um, house and the driveway is to the right of this ash tree. 
um, and you can see it in the lower image. Um, if, if we could look at page three, please. So we're proposing um, two 10 foot wide curb cuts off of Birch Street um, on each side of the lot. And that would again, provide us with um, uh, basically a, a lot that we can create two equal duplexes in the center of the lot. And as I, as I mentioned, the, the 47 Birch Street, the driveway is on the opposite side so there's there's still some distance between this new proposed driveway, which is fairly close to where the existing driveway is, mm -hmm. um, and then the new driveway on the other side, um, again abuts undeveloped land. And then this is um, the yeah, site this plan is, that was submitted this, as well. No? The site plan, correct, correct, and. And the landscape plan is based on this. Uh, so you're, there's the two 10 foot eight, 10 point eight foot side yard setbacks, um, which would be the two driveways. And then Correct. I believe you're indicating that um, this is a six foot fence that you're providing. Yes, yes. The uh, driveways would actually be, uh, I mean, they're nominal 10 feet, but uh, nine foot nine. Uh, to provide another three inches on the on the property line to to allow us to install the fence. Okay. So that uh, three inches, point two five and eight. That's yeah, a little over a foot on the on the fence line. <clears throat> okay. Um, <clears throat> so in the zoning by in the Arlington zoning bylaw, um, drive uh, parking is allowed on a driveway in the side yard. Um, but it is required that there's a vegetative buffer between the driveway and an adjacent residential parcel. Um, so what is the, what's the, are you just proposing a, a solid fence or is it vegetation or what exactly are you proposing? Um, right now it's the, the fence. Um, I believe with the foot though, we could also um, include um, some vegetation at the base of the fence. Um, the fence would be salt installed. Uh, it's indicated to be installed maybe four inches above grade. So there would be room for a ground cover. Um, thank you for that. And uh, so there is an existing uh, house on the right, to the right-hand side, um, and then to the left and to the rear is land, it's Arlington Land Realty, um, which is the developers for Thorndike Place. Uh, so that land um, is intended to remain um, as, as a as forested property um, as a part of that agreement. Um, <clears throat> Other item, and I don't know if the building inspectors had an opportunity to speak with you today or not. Um, I was reviewing this with him and we're concerned there may be a miscalculation in the rear yard um, of the property because the required right now, the, the although the first floor is set back at 24.8 feet, the actual rear of the building is only 18.8 .8 feet off the rear of the property. Um, right, and and we're taking the um, rear lot reduction. The lot mm -hmm. is only ninety feet deep. Okay, um, but at eighteen point eight feet, it does not meet the twenty foot minimum required for usable open space. Um, this is overhanging the usable over space, and it's it's less than twenty five percent of the usable open space below. So usable open space, by the, the definition for usable open space is that it has to be part of the yard. Um, and because the yard ends at the building, even though it extends under an overhang at the rear, it's not considered usable open space. Um, it's not under our purview to review that this evening. I just 
I, I bring it to your attention because the um you know, I don't want you to be caught flat footed when you apply for the building permit because I, I would encourage you to speak with the building mm -hmm. uh, commissioner in regards to this okay. question. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Certainly. Um so with that, are there questions or uh from the board in regards to this application? Not see any questions, Mr. Oh, Mr. Mr. Chair. Um, I, I noticed when I was reviewing the application um, on the landscape plans, the the flood zones, the two flood zones that this property falls in are indicated. Are there any other requirements um, because of the flood zone for development of this property? Um, yes, we will be going to conservation, and there will be um, requirements for the method of construction if it's approved. Okay, and that, that review has not occurred yet. That That's correct. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Are there other questions from the board? Seeing none, I will go ahead and open this for public comment. Uh, just to remind everyone, public questions and comments are taken as they relate to the matter at hand and should be directed to the board for the purpose of informing its decision. Members of the public who wish to speak should digitally raise their hand using the button on the reactions tab in the Zoom application. Those calling in by phone, please dial star nine to indicate you would like to speak. You will be called upon by the chair. He asked to give your name and address and be given time for your questions and comments. All questions are to be addressed through the chair. Please remember to speak clearly. Um, are there any members of the public who wish to speak to this application at 51 Birch Street? I do not see anybody wishing to speak to this application. Just want to confirm. Anyone wishing to speak to 51 Birch? Seeing none, I will go ahead and close the public comment period for this hearing. Uh, so what the board has in front of it, this is an application for a sp uh, only for a second driveway under section 6110A of the zoning bylaw. Uh, this is not related to um, a change to an existing house. This is a de novo project, so the existing house will be torn down and replaced. Um, by this new house. Um, the existing house is a single family house. This will be a two family house, but it is a, a, a two family district. Uh, so the use is appropriate. Um, and then I had uh, addressed the question with the applicant in regards to um, the, the usable open space, the rear yard, but that's not under our purview this evening uh, as far as this hearing is concerned. Um, <clears throat> And so the what the board would need to make a decision on in regards to um, location is falls under section 6110A, the location of parking spaces. So the board would need to find that a second driveway may be added in a manner that avoids an undue concentration of population, that a second driveway may be added in a manner that allows adequate provision of transportation, and that a second driveway may be added in a manner that conserves the value of land and buildings in the vicinity. And in making those determinations, we will uh, also review the special, the general special permit uh, requirements under section 333. Um, so with that, um, So oftentimes the board will go before conservation. And so we'll have the benefit of sort of their requirements. Um, but in this case, we're going before conservation. So I just uh, sort of thinking through if there's anything we would be doing that uh, would be un would need to be undone by conservation. Um, have you, um, I'd ask Mr. Riesling, have you made any determinations in regards to the, the makeup of the driveways? Uh, we're proposing um, permeable concrete pavers. Okay.
Um, and then the only other question that's that's in my mind is if if there's a change to the overall design um, to work out uh, conflict with the building department in regards to the usable open space, how or if that would impact the driveways. Um, my, my sense is it probably would, you would not change substantially the design of this, the building, but just ch change things in order to comply with the requirement. Yes, yes. Okay. All right. So then with that, we'll go ahead and um, review the required findings. Uh, so the first uh, under section 6110A is that a second driveway may be added in a manner that avoids an undue concentration of population. Um, so obviously this is a two family district. It is an existing single family home. Um, so this will effectively uh, double the cars from this property. Um, but that is in keeping with the intent of the zoning bylaw. And um, as the applicant had noted that the, the proposed driveway is not um, immediately adjacent to another driveway on the street. And so um, this should hopefully not cause uh, the potential for any disruption of, um, of use of the driveway from either property. Um, that the second driveway may be added in a manner that allows adequate provision of transportation. Uh, so as the applicant had, had noted, in order for the two units to each have sufficient number of parking spaces um, and to have the parking at grade and in the side yards, as opposed to um, either under the house or directly uh, or in the front of the house, which would require um, uh, the removal of an existing tree that is a very substantial public shade tree. Um, that the, the use of the side driveways uh, would allow them to provide the required number of park, the amount of parking for a structure of this type. And the third is that the second driveway may be added in a manner that conserves the value of land and buildings in the vicinity. Um, so it does not appear that the addition of a, a driveway would impact uh, necessarily the value of land or buildings in the vicinity. Um, I, I do note that the a budding property to the right, um, that their house does seem to be fairly close to the property line um, on that side, um, which, which which does give me a little bit of pause. Uh, but as the applicant had noted that they're, they are planning to provide a privacy fence um, between the two properties that hopefully should ameliorate um, any impact that it may have. And that the, the applicant is gonna look into um, providing um, some greenery associated with that to comply with the zoning bylaw that requires that there be a vegetated buffer um, to an adjacent property. So those are the three findings that need to be made under section 6110A. Um, and then under section 333, which is the general section on special permits, um, the board would need to find that the adverse effects of the proposed use will not outweigh its beneficial impacts. Um, <clears throat> so the second driveway would create um, an additional point of traffic entry, but this is a very quiet uh, section at the, at, the, um, sort of the, at the back end of this neighborhood, uh, so to speak. This is a very uh, quiet neighborhood. The board is very familiar with this neighborhood uh, due to work on previous projects and um, that this should not uh, uh, cause an undue burden on um, on the neighborhood. The, the requested use is allowed or allowed by special permit in the district. So special uh, second driveway can be allowed by special permit under section 6110A. Um, the requested use is essential or desirable to the public convenience or welfare, um, whereas this property is being brought, uh, converted from a single family to a two family house um, and doing so will, uh, is allowed under the zoning bylaw and creates a house of a size that is anticipated for this zoning district. Um, it would be desirable to, um, to facilitate that and the creation of a second driveway would lead to that. 
Um, the requested use will not create undue traffic congestion or impair pedestrian safety. Um, the proposed structure is actually farther back from the street than the current structure. Um, it is the last house on this side of the street. And so there should not be any, <clears throat> um, any traffic traveling down this street. Uh, Past this house, except to to serve houses on the opposite side, and um, that the hopefully the the work that is being done in the house will um, improve the quality of the the uh, pedestrian traffic in front of the house, and uh, use will not overload any public system. Uh, creation of a second driveway, as the applicant has noted, it, it would be have concrete pervious pavers which would allow any rainwater that falls on the driveway to uh, percolate into uh, the groundwater. And so it will not impact the existing storm drainage system in that neighborhood, which would be the only public system affected. Um, any special regulations for the requested use are fulfilled. So the special regulation that is at 6110A uh, findings, which the board has already reviewed. Uh, the requested use will not impair the character or integrity of the district. Um, having a most houses in these districts have existing surface parking to the side of the house. Um, doing this on both sides should not uh, impact the, the character integrity, especially whereas on the on the left hand side, there are no other houses on that side of the street. Um, and then the requested use will not be detrimental to public health or welfare. Um, it is just a driveway it does not um, impact the health or welfare beyond the, the traffic and the pedestrian safety, which we've already discussed. And the requested use will not cause an excess of use detrimental to the neighborhood. This is uh, the addition of a driveway to the um, to the side and should not, uh, is not causing an excess in the, the number of driveways or such in this neighborhood. Um, so that is how I am viewing this, uh, this case. Are there any questions? Questions, comments, or contradictions from the board? Mr. Chairman. Mr. Hanlon. Um, I certainly don't have any contradictions. I think that that the chair has, has presented the property, has, has presented the question uh, uh, correctly. Um, I just wanted to <clears throat> sort of make a more general observation that it is often true that what that when people are changing are building duplexes basically and they're side by side, it's you it's often more convenient for the people who occupy the, the duplexes to have separated uh separated driveways. Um and that potentially increases uh the concentration of curb cuts that may be thought to have an adverse impact and in some places does have an adverse adverse impact. Here because of the fact that the driveway on the right side is located on the opposite side of the property and there won't be a driveway on the other side because that is going to be conservation land and I think that will, is apt to be true uh, even if ultimately the uh, project that has previously been approved for uh, uh, the Thorndike Place project doesn't proceed because of some other reason. Um, so essentially, the pattern that emerges is very similar to the pattern that would normally emerge uh, in the event that you just have driveways lined up one to a property. Um, so it seems to me that 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 we normally take as as normal and as a pr appropriate way of uh, organizing the access to the streets. Um, certainly, I wouldn't want to sacrifice a significant tree in order to uh, in order not to have that. Uh, and so it seems to me that that it, it, what we have is is sensitive is, is sensible in this way. It, there is a general problem that that because of the increased prevalences of duplexes rather than two family houses, uh, you have more and more side by side and less and less interest in having consolidated driveways because you want to keep the two houses separate and have separate access to the street. That's always a conflict, and this ordinance, this bylaw, was not written with that conflict in mind. And to some extent, the language doesn't provide us with the guidance that we need in order to, uh, in order to work that out. 
but this is kind of a unique case. This is the only one that I can remember where the way in which the the access to the street works with two driveways uh, pretty much replicates what the normal pattern is uh, when you don't have two driveways, but you have each uh, one driveway for each house. Thank you, Mr. Hanlon. Any other comments from the board? <clears throat> Seeing none, uh, should the board vote to approve this special permit application? Um, there are the three standard conditions which were previously read into the record this evening, uh, which the board would apply. Um, I would also um, ask that the board consider a condition that the applicant is to provide a revised landscape plan to the Inspectional Services Department demonstrating compliance with the requirement to provide a vegetative buffer between the side yard driveway and residential properties. Um, just want to make sure that that is covered um, and that may very well be impacted by the Conservation Commission before. Um, so this would just be, we would just need something at the end just to confirm that we are meeting that requirement. Are there any other conditions which members of the board feel would be appropriate for this matter? Mr. Chairman, I have a question about the conditions that you just mentioned and, and yes. something that are similar to that. Um, we've got plans before us, but the only issue before us has to do with the access. Um, so presumably, I'm, I'm, we, we will have a, a standard condition that says that the applicant has to uh, observe the uh, plans that, that have been presented to us. Um, if they should change in a way that doesn't affect the... Uh, <clears throat> that doesn't affect the access. In other words, the driveways don't change. Uh, will the applicant be need, need to come back for us uh, for leave to make any other amendments that wouldn't be tied to the access? A very good question. Um, we could certainly write a condition um essentially to that effect that any changes so that the board understands the applicant may make changes due to requirements set by conservation commission or inspectional services Changes not affecting the layout, the approved layout, approved driveway layout. Shall not be considered to be a deviation from the approved plans. So if the board would accept um, at a condition that the board understands the applicant may make changes due to requirements set by the Conservation Commission or Inspectional Services Department. Um, of course, I can't read my handwriting. Changes not affecting the approved driveway layout shall not be considered to be a deviation from the approved plans. Mr. Hanlon, does that seem to meet the requirements? Well, it, it does. Let me just add, let me just complicate things a little bit further. Um, I wonder if it would be appropriate, appropriate since Mr. Risling's representation about preserving the 30 inch ash tree is a not insignificant factor in our decision. Uh, I would be inclined to recommend that we have a condition requiring the preservation of that tree subject to the concurrence of the tree warden. Um, and in that event, that would not relate to the driveway as such. Uh, so I would probably suggest adding to the approved, when you say approved plans, uh, say, or any specific condition in the special permit grant to include, to include that. 
Uh, we could do that, or the we do have a standard a condition that we frequently use that the board requests the applicant work with the tree warden to address compliance with the town's tree protection and preservation bylaw. And so we could start with that and then say, including the preservation of the um, public shade tree in that, front of the property. With me too. I just, I just, you know, it's it's really belt and suspenders because there's reasons why it is that that needs to be preserved in any event. But it seems to me useful uh, for us to include to include that in the conditions that we have, just to to note that it was an important part of our decision. Understood. Okay, so what we are proposing, we have the, our three standard conditions, then there are three additional conditions. The first is that the applicant is to provide a revised landscape plant to the Inspectional Services Department, demonstrating compliance with the requirement to provide a vegetative buffer between a side yard driveway and residential property. Uh, the second would be that the board understands the applicant may make changes due to the requirements set by thing. the approved driveway layout shall not be considered to be a deviation from the approved plans. And the third would be that the board requests the applicant work with the tree warden to address compliance with the town's tree protection and preservation bylaw, including the preservation of the public shade tree in front of the property. There any additional conditions that the board feels would be appropriate in this matter. Seeing none, the chair will entertain a motion. Me, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Hanlon. I move that the uh, board approve the application subject to the three standard conditions and to the three additional conditions that the chair has just read into the record. Second. Thank you, Mr. Hanlon. Thank you, Mr. DuPont. So this is a vote of the board to approve a special permit for 51 Birch Street with six conditions. Um, and this is a special permit request for a special driveway, or excuse me, for a second driveway. Uh, motion by Mr. Hanlon, approved by Mr. DuPont. Roll call vote of the board. Uh, Mr. DuPont? Aye. Mr. Hanlon? Aye. Mr. Holly? Aye. Mr. Cadelli? Aye. Aye. And the chair votes aye. Uh, the special permit for 51 Birch is approved with the conditions. Thank you very much. Thank you for your time and your consideration. You're very welcome. And then I'll go back. Um, went back to our agenda. This brings up item number four. Three, Seven eight six nineteen Chatham Street. Uh, and tell us what they are proposing. Yeah, hi. I just wanted to introduce ourselves. We're the homeowners, uh, Rock Hargrove, my wife Molly Hargrove. We've lived here since uh, I think 2016, Seven, 17. 16. I always get that wrong. Or 16, thank you. <laughs> um, and we have two kids who attend Stratton School right at the end of the street, and we'd love to stay here, but need a little bit more space. Um and Katie Flynn, our architect, is going to walk you through the application. But thanks for hearing us. Well, thank you very much. Uh, Ms. Flynn, do you have a presentation to make? I'm happy to. If you'd like me to share a screen, I have the permit set that we submitted. And I also have like a really brief, just sort of three-page summary of, of basically the same thing. Um, or you could open the permit set from your screen, whichever you prefer. That's great. Colleen, if you wouldn't mind giving her permission. She is all set. Great. Thank, Thank you. Great. So um, like Rock and Molly said, they live at 19 Chatham Street and they're hoping to put an addition onto the rear of their house. And we are seeking a special permit that will allow us to increase the gross square footage of the home by 877 square feet, which is more than the 750 square feet allowed by right. So that's what we're here to seek a special permit for. and. Uh, this is a really brief summary that we put together for Rock and Molly to share with their neighbors just to understand what's happening. But we do have the full permit set here. And um, our calculations show that the property is existing non-conforming in four ways. Um, lot area, lot frontage and width, 
front yard setback and side yard setback. Those are all existing nonconformities. So we're creating no new nonconformities, but we are adding 877 square feet. But we check out on open space and all other metrics. So that's the kind of summary of what we're hoping to do, but um, we can share these kind of digestible images for you. This is the house as it appears from the front, from Chatham Street, the top image. And our addition is at the rear. It's kind of a low slung two-story addition. The um, grade slopes down to the existing garage and then slopes back up to the backyard. So we're not doing any modifications um, to existing natural grade, really. We're just um, tacking on this two-story addition. And it is kind of a, a smaller volume than the primary volume of the house. So the home will still read really exactly as it does from the front with the exception of being just sort of generally spiffed up with new windows and siding and things like that. Um, another benefit of this project is that because we're affecting more than 50% of the house, we're required to abide by the new um, energy stretch code. So the whole house is going to get an energy makeover and be much more um, efficient and kind of healthy for the for the neighborhood and for the Hargrove family. So again, here's the front elevation, the driveway side elevation, and the rear elevation. Um, I, I do want to note, and I apologize for this, we've tinkered with the front elevation and added a couple of windows since the permit set that we shared with you. So I just wanted to um, clarify that as I was listening to the prior hearings, there will be just this modest change of adding a second window at the front bedroom and we're putting a circle window over the front door. Um, but I'm happy to answer any questions that you may have. And I think I'll land on the um, kind of annotated site plan as an easy way to talk about what we're hoping to do. Oh, I'm sorry, one last thing. There's a existing single story kind of um, addition in this back rectangle that will be demolished to make way for the new larger addition. So um, that's just to clarify what that little bump is at the back of the house. Great, well, thank you very much. That um, this description of the project, I, when I was first reviewing the project, my one question had to do with the transition from in the roof from the old house to the new house, but because um, it looked like there was a little bit of a hitch, but it, it, I believe that's just a little bit of a parapet there on the edge. That's exactly right. Yep. And then it's going to be a predominantly flat roof with um, just, you know, enough of a cricket to shed water through the parapet wall. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm. Otherwise, there were no other questions I had um, on the application. And you noted that there may just be a change in a couple of windows on the front of the of the house, but otherwise everything else is essentially as submitted. Correct. Yep. Oh. And that, that change would be the um, existing portion of the house. So it would be, you know, not the the part for which we're seeking a special permit. Okay. Questions from the board? Mr. Chair. Mr. Riccardelli. You can ask a question about the um the retaining wall which is noted in red here so it looked like there was an existing retaining wall there is the is the wall just being rebuilt or is, is it taller in the new condition than in the existing condition that's a great question it's something that we haven't totally designed through yet because um it does need to be repaired and i think that's our primary goal is to repair it kind of in its current place and configuration um, but the stairs that exist there now are like steep and crummy and like the driveway has this weird like uh, mound of dirt kind of at the back edge of it. So we're hoping to clean it up a little bit and that might change the geometry of the retaining wall a little bit. But we're aware that if a retaining wall is within the side yard setback area, it needs to be, I think it's less than four feet tall. And we know we need to meet natural grade at the property line and things like that. So I, I'm sorry, we don't have like a total uh, ironed out plan for that, but the goal is to um, kind of repair in kind as much as possible. 
Okay, Mr. Chair, if I may just respond to yes, that. Please. Um, uh, that, I think that's great. It's good that you know about those regulations. You know, oftentimes when um, these come up at the property lines, neighbors have concerns about, you know, water management at those locations. So I just encourage you to uh, consider that if if the wall um, is taller or if you're regrading in that condition, uh, just to be respectful of the neighbor's property. Thank you. Other questions to the board? Mr. Chairman. Mr. Hanlon. Um, I wonder if Ms. Flynn could explain to us a little bit where th this new structure, well, the bigger structure will be in comparison to where the other st structures are in the vicinity. There's 23 on one side. There's another house, 17, I believe, on the corner. There are a couple in the back. Um, and I noticed in the record that the owners of number 23 have supported the application, but when you're dealing with, with the, when you're dealing with the, uh, this particular section of the bylaw, they, there's a sort of a, a, a thumb on the scale in favor of protecting the sort of acquired rights of the people who, who houses are already there. And so it's always helpful to have an analysis of how this relates to the structures in the vicinity. We haven't um, captured the adjacent structures in the property survey, but my understanding, and maybe if, if Roth would like to hop in if he knows offhand how the neighboring structures relate, um, the footprint of the existing house at 19 Chatham is smaller than its neighbors on either side, I believe. Um, and it's certainly not kind of out of scale with the surrounding neighborhood. Um, I think that's all I can sort of definitively say, but uh, without, I'm sorry, without having the like crisp drawings of the neighboring properties. The the one um, additional comment I will make is that Rock and Molly are also really cognizant of retaining not only like a technically usable open space of a backyard, but like an actually family friendly, large, comfortable backyard. So um, I think we could have pushed further back relative to the rear yard setback and the um, open space calculation, but there's an existing patio kind of in this footprint and we're trying to respect the fabric that's been already established. So um, that's sort of a soft way of saying we're, we're aware of that, but I don't have a hard answer. Thank you. Lynn, actually on the, on the front page of the drawing set, you have what looks like it might be a figure ground of the Oh, it might just be like a Google Maps screenshot. Yeah, yeah, okay. but it might just give a little sense as to it. That's the existing house footprint. So, if I were to hazard a guess, we'd be going back about halfway as far as that circle does, um, or two thirds of the circle, something like that. I'll flip back and forth. It's. It's less than the remaining yard, the addition. So yeah, it's like almost to the edge of the circle, something like that, sort of in line with the um, rear walls of the neighboring homes. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Hanlon. I can just characterize this. The, this house is considerably removed from the structures that are uh, on uh, Fabian Street immediately behind this. So the only really nearby structures are at 17, which is to the right, and 23, which is to the left. And I think I have that right. Um, the people at 23 have been basically endorsed this application, and I'm assuming that that they feel that this is compatible with their house. And 17 has, we, we may hear from them later on this evening, but uh, their house is just a little bit further away than than 23 is and doesn't look from the map as if there would be a particularly large impact from an additional structure on this property. So that's kind of what the map tends to show. And we'll see if the public hearing shows anything else. Are there any other questions from the board? Seeing none. Um... I will note that the um, the board is in receipt of three letters um, in regards to um, 
this application. Up. Come on. So this is a letter um, uh, from Aldi and David Boggs of One Epping Street, um, speaking in favor. And then second from Paul Sohn at 23 Chatham, which is one that uh, Mr. Hanlon had referenced, um, speaking in favor. And the third, um, from Liz Melby and Adam Bailey, um, and that they are in favor as well. So three letters in favor uh, from um, neighbors. So with that, um, we'll go ahead and <clears throat> open the meetings for public comment. Um, the public comment is taken as it relates to the matter at hand. It should be directed to the board for the purpose of informing our decision. If you wish to speak, you can digitally raise your hand using the reactions tab in the Zoom application. If you're calling in by phone, you may dial star nine. Called upon by the chair, be asked to give your name and address, given time for your questions and comments. Are there any members of the public who wish to address this application? Mr. Moore. Uh, yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. Steve Moore, P. Down Street. Um, I, I do want to compliment uh, the board's uh, uh, attention to issues, particularly on the last case where I could not really uh, participate. So um, um, that's great. And relative to this case, uh, a question for the applicant. I was trying to follow on uh, Google Maps, particularly the street view of Google Maps, the, um, the shape of the backyard. And on the Google Maps, there was a whole series of white fences around the backyard. And I'm wondering if the applicant could relate whether or not those represent the property boundaries currently. Um, I can just say, Katie, sorry, yeah. when we had those fences installed, um, we conducted a survey, so they should be, they should reflect the property line. Okay, thank you, Mr. Chair. I, uh, um, that, that's great. It looks like there's no uh, significant uh, trees in the, uh, the edging of those boundaries that are going to be impacted by any construction back there. I, uh, also, I can see that where they're planning to actually put the addition, it doesn't I'm not sure if they're trees there or not. I do want to draw the attention, though, just as with the last case, that the significant public uh, street tree um, there is going to require some significant um, protection during the construction, just because it is a large tree and will require protection. So I would, uh, just like uh, the board did for the last case, I would certainly encourage the applicant to talk to the tree board about dealing with that particular concern. Thank you, Mr. I'll comment Thank that you, in the tree ward and go back and forth about that tree quite frequently because it it uh it has branches that fall from time to time. But yeah, we, we can definitely do that. It looked like there had been some trimming, Mr. Chair. I uh, <laughs> so uh, good. It, I think trees complement the house, and I'm glad you're uh, being uh, careful at maintaining it. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Work. Are there other members of the public who wish to address this hearing? Seeing none, we'll go ahead and close those hearing for public comment. So what the board has in front of it, this is a um, request for a special permit for large addition uh, by section 542B6 in the zoning bylaw, um, which applies to uh, large additions that are outside the foundation wall of the existing building. Uh, which this is in the rear yard. Um, the, there are, are several um, pre-existing non-conformities uh, with the property that were already uh, read in by, by Ms. Flynn. Um, and there are, are no new non-conformities that will be created. Uh, and there are no existing non-conformities that will be made more non-conforming. Um, uh, 
in regards to residential design guidelines, um, this is an addition to the rear of the house, uh, which is in keeping with the uh, with the request of the guidelines and the, the existing house is being kept uh, essentially intact. Um, and uh, so it sort of preserves the existing street look and the, the setbacks and whatnot from the street side. Um, so all of that is appropriate. Um, and then in terms of the project review, um, the one question I had had on the application, and I believe this is um, just a typo, um, there is no change to the height of the building, correct? Uh, no, the existing ridge line is going to stay the same, and the addition is lower than it. So, okay. yeah. Okay. Um, when the application was was uh, typed in electronically, the building height was changed from 29.62 to 39.62, but I figured that was just a typo, so we'll... Um, Would have been a typo. Yeah, perfect. Um, then, uh, thank you. Uh, the gross floor area and the usable open space are all fine. Uh, so with that, um, so under section 542B6, large additions, the board is required to make three findings. Uh, first, that the alteration or addition is in harmony with other structures and uses in the vicinity. The second is that we are to consider dimensions and setbacks in relation to abutting structures and uses. And the third, we are to consider conformity with the purposes of the bylaw. And then uh, in review, of uh, harmony with other structures, we typically review the special permit criteria, um, which we will go through as well. So um, for that, so the alteration or addition is in harmony with other structures and uses in the vicinity. Um, as we review the so the size relative to adjacent structures in the neighborhood, um, this will be sort of keeping in general size with the structures on both to both sides uh, will not be significantly larger um, than other structures in the area and the addition is kept to the rear um, and is not uh, larger than the existing house and so it will be uh, in harmony with both the existing structure but also with other structures and uses in the vicinity um, as Mr. Hanlon pointed out, the dimensions and setbacks in relation to abutting structures, uh, there was quite a bit of distance uh, behind this house to the next houses on the next street, um, and this will not be causing uh, any sort of crowding of, of adjacent properties, and as we said before, is in keeping with uh, the general scale of houses in the vicinity, and um, the conformity with the purposes of the bylaw, uh, so the the purposes in bylaw include such things as preservation of, uh, of fresh air and sunlight um, and increasing the value of the property, increasing the value of the town um, and having an eye towards conservation and, and other such things. Um, and certainly this does all of those. Um, then looking upon the required findings for special permit, uh, the adverse effects of the proposed use will not outweigh its beneficial impacts. Um, the adverse effects I think are very, could be very minor. Um, as Mr. Riccadelli pointed out, the depending on um, what goes on with the reconstruction of the uh, the existing retaining wall that is sort of outside our purview for the for this uh, special permit, but certainly that that is something that the applicant has said they will uh, look into uh, going forward. Um, that the requested use is allowed or allowed by special permit in the district. Um, this is a single family house, a single family district that is allowed. Um, and then the the uh, the large addition is covered by a, a subsequent uh, condition here. Uh, requested use is essential or desirable to the public convenience or welfare. Um, 
the use and enjoyment of the existing housing stock in Arlington um, is in generally a public good and the increase in the size to make the house more usable to uh, families that have uh, set down roots in our community is a net benefit to the town. Um, that the requested use will not create undue traffic congestion or impair uh, pedestrian safety. Again, this is a in addition to the rear yard, it doesn't impact sight lines at the front of the property, will not increase the number um, of people living on the property, and will not have an impact on uh, traffic or pedestrian safety in front of the property. Requested use will not overload any public systems. Um, it will remain a single family house, so any uh, there will not be an increase in the, the number of occupants of the house uh, caused by the construction project, and so therefore will not um, overload any public system. Uh, special regulations for the requested use are fulfilled. So the special regulations, this is the requirement for the large addition, and we have already reviewed uh, the findings that are required for that. Uh, requested use will not impair the character or integrity of the district. Um, the, this uh, single family house will remain single family will be expanded in such a manner that it is in keeping with the general pattern in the neighborhood. Um, will not be detrimental to public health or welfare. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, this is just as, as sort of on the other points. Um, this is very much in keeping with um, ought, what the house ought to be. Um, and lastly, sorry about that. Uh, lastly, will not cause an excess of use detrimental to the neighborhood. Um, and that certainly will not single family house and single family district of a size that is compatible with its uh, adjacent homes. Are there any questions, comments, or contradictions to those findings? Seeing none, uh, should the board approve, vote to approve? I'm sorry, Mr. Hanlon? Yeah, I just wanted to say that this, the last, excuse me, um, on every single case that we have, the have we come to that last criterion and, and we always say the same thing. And we might just want to just kind of take general notice that when you've got, uh, when you have a situation where the use is the use that is this primary use that is envisioned by the zoning district, that condition never applies. There needs to be a conflict of uses for that to be, uh, you know, that's aiming at putting little stores in residential districts and that sort of thing. It doesn't really apply here in, in general Rather than having to say that each time, we should just take notice that um, that 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 is really inapplicable to this kind of case. Thank you. Um, so then moving on to conditions, um, the board has the three standard conditions that were earlier read into the uh, the record. Um, there was a, a recommendation by Mr. Moore that uh, we include our typical con our somewhat typical condition that the board requests the applicant work with the tree warden to address compliance with the town's tree protection and preservation bylaw. And uh, as was, was raised by the architect, um, they may be uh, shifting some of the windows or doing something different with some of the windows on the existing house. And so I would propose the condition that the board does not consider changes to the fenestration on the existing building to be a deviation requiring review by the board. Um, so if those would be acceptable to the board. And with that, unless there's any additional questions, the chair will entertain a motion. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Hanlon. I'm hoping that this is a sufficiently entertaining motion. The uh, uh, I move that the I board approve this application subject to the three standard conditions and the additional conditions that the chair just read into the record. Second. So that would, thank you, Mr. DuPont. So. Just to confirm, this is a motion to approve the special permit for 19 Chatham Street with five total conditions. Um, 
as a motion by Mr. Hamill, approved by Mr. DuPont. Uh, so a vote of the board. Mr. DuPont? Aye. Mr. Hanlon? Aye. Mr. Holly? Aye. Mr. Riccadelli? Aye. And the chair votes aye. The special permit for 19 Chatham Street is approved. Um, as we noted before, the, these approvals are uh, preliminary until the final uh, written decision is approved, which we hopefully will be doing at our, our next meeting. Thank you. Great. Thank you very much. Appreciate your time. Yep. Have a good night. Thank good you. Night. Well. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Hanlon. Um, now that we're off off the record for the other cases anyway, um, we've got three opinions coming out of tonight, I think. And um, I'm willing to take two of them, but would love to have somebody take uh, the third. Um, I also am wondering whether Ms. Ralston could just make it a general practice. She has both a good Zoom uh, recording of, of all of our hearings, and that recording also produces a transcript. Um, and it's possible for her, because she has been doing this with me, is to post at least the transcript, and I think both, in uh, one drive or whatever it's called that the town version of that um if when we if we move to the point which i think that we have to eventually where uh the opinions are spread around more it would be helpful possibly for everyone to just have one place that's accessible to all of us where they can go to look for those, <clears throat> for those uh, and make whatever use of them that that they need to um so i'm i mean as well as i think is still still with us and if she can manage doing that, it would make it easier for everyone who might be writing an opinion to go back, check what was said at a given point, use the transcript and check what really the tr was said that the transcript recommends, which is which is always a, which is a challenge sometimes too. Um, but anyway, it makes it it makes it easier uh, for uh, for everyone to be in a position to uh, 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 to write up one of these. Patrick, I'm happy to do that same place that I put it for yours on the um, SharePoint site, and then I can just share the link with everyone yeah. so they can see it. That would be great. So if there are folks who would like to take their take a hand at writing a, a decision, um, we have shared them around a little bit uh, more recently, but it would be uh, as Mr. Hanlon said, it'd be nice if somebody could take take one of these on as well. Um, I don't know if we need to, it would be great if someone could step forward tonight, but if not, if you could just um, let Mr. Hanlon and myself know um, that you're willing to do it, uh, it would be great. It doesn't take an exorbitant amount of time. It's really, it's just um, taking an old one and modifying it to meet the, to meet the new requirements, so. I can, do so much large, I can do the large edition if that's okay with you guys. That'd be great. Sure. That's the last one, right? Yep. Yeah, 19 Chatham. Okay. Thank you, Roger. You're welcome. Uh, so we have meetings coming up uh, two in March. We have March 12 and March 26. Uh, March 12th, we have two continuances from our last hearing that are scheduled to come up on that one. Um, so we'll see what happens there. And then, um, we have meetings scheduled for April 9th and April 23rd. Um, so, if, uh, know, April 23rd is the, right after the first night of town meeting. Um, and it is also during Passover week. Uh, so I don't know if, um, if that, if there's any members of the board who would uh, not want to attend on the 23rd, um, you can go ahead and let me know. And um, if we need to, we can reschedule that to another night. Mr. Chairman? Mr. Hanlon? Um, I would suggest that we make a decision on that now, or at least, you know, not wait. Um, I'm not quite sure whether there's anybody on the board for whom that is a significant problem, but there will be people who are members of the public for whom that may be a problem. And 
the 23rd is the second night of Passover. That is a night that is generally regarded as a time for a compulsory Seder. The, the first two nights are the ones that almost everybody does. And uh, so there will, will be some people who potentially may be interested in whatever will be on that agenda who will feel as if it's not appropriate and, and not and certainly not convenient for them to have to attend that night. And, and I think that it would be better if we didn't put them in the decision where they had to sign. Would anybody be opposed to shifting the 23rd to the 30th? So just move it out one week. Fine. Okay. We'll go ahead and do that. We'll move our April 23rd meeting to the 30th. Christian? Yes, Colleen. Um, as of today, the two people we had for the 27th don't have completed applications. They didn't provide the items that they needed, and I can't do the legal notices on Thursday. So that meeting, unless there's a continuance from the next meeting, um, would end up being canceled. The, that would be in the March 26th? Yes. Okay. Excellent. So, Mr. Chairman? Yes, sir. If I could just do, this has come up a couple of other times, but if in fact we're putting off the, the we, we ought to be just paying some attention to the fact that, that whenever we cancel a meeting like that, it postpones when we act on the decision. And mm -hmm. having a 10 minute meeting to get rid of the administrative items and not make the applicants wait may sometimes be valuable. Absolutely. I can't remember what, where, what the record was that we set in December, but we could certainly aim to try to beat that. I think that was 23 minutes. Yeah, I, I think if, if we do careful planning and write out a script in advance, we can probably whip through this. I bet you we can do it in less than 10. <laughs> Perfect. I'm sorry, anything else for consideration this evening? Seeing none, I would like to thank you all for your participation in tonight's meeting of the Arlington Zoning Board of Appeals. Appreciate everyone's patience throughout the meeting. I would especially like to thank Colleen Ralston and Mike Champa for their assistance in preparing for and hosting our online meeting. Please note the purpose of the board's recording the meeting is to ensure the creation of an accurate record of our proceedings. It is my understanding that the recording made will be provided to ACMI and available on demand at acmi.tv within uh, coming days or coming weeks. If anyone has comments or recommendations, please send them via email to zda at town.arlington.ma.us. That email address is also listed on the Zoning Board of Appeals website. And to conclude tonight's meeting, I would ask for a motion to adjourn. So moved, Mr. Chairman. Second. Thank you, Thank you Mr. DuPont. Vote of the board to adjourn. Mr. DuPont. Aye. Mr. Hanlon. Aye. Mr. Holly. Aye. Mr. Riccadelli. Aye. Ms. Hoffman. Aye. Mr. LeBlanc. Aye. And the chair votes aye. The board is adjourned. Thank you all very much. Thank enjoy you. your uh, enjoy leap day tomorrow. And uh, <laughs> see you all. See you all the next month. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.